that uh, a video game has an assessment tool can replace a standardized test. I don't not only think that they can replace them, but they probably need to replace them. Okay. Or become a part of them, I'll say. Mm -hmm. um, I think we hear a lot of talk about how standardized assessments are bad and sort of dr drives sort of schools in the wrong directions. Mm -hmm. And I, I think um, the issue is not that standardized tests are bad by their nature, but that standardized tests that we have now are bad. Okay. And I do think that the current sort of sets of standardized tests do sort of drive schools to sort of teaching to the lowest common denominator, mm -hmm. things that are easily testable. But there's a lot of demand now for sort of skills that go beyond what's easily testable. Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, whether they're called 21st century skills or complex thinking skills. Well, let's uh, talk about that for a second. What sure. are 21st century skills? I know it's kind of a moving target, right? It is a moving target. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of this a lot of different but related definitions. Mm -hmm. um, they involve anything from problem solving to collaboration to uh, you know solving open-ended problems, mm -hmm. um, a lot of science thinking skills like hypothesis formation and understanding data are a part of that. Um, and these, a lot of those things are things that you do in games. And mm -hmm. I think that's right. where that sort of natural linkage comes up as people start to think about those sort of sets of skills and say, what do we have that encourages people to do those things or sort of requires people to do those things and the games rise quickly to the top of that list. Do you think that the university is slow, or not, it's not just university, but school, the school system in general is slow to um, accept innovation to, you know, try to push right. things forward? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Had me an innovation. <laughs> yeah, schools are, are very slow to accept innovation. Um, they're very sort of um, conservative systems. Right. Um, perhaps it's because there's a lot of stakeholders, perhaps it's because there's a lot at stake, perhaps it's because they have really complex jobs um, and it's really hard to, to, to move that ship um, because it's, it's got so many different captains and passengers on board. Right. Um, so they, they, they don't change very readily. Ultimately it's what teachers do in their classroom that, that sort of matters. Sure. Um, and I, I see a lot of desire for teachers to do things that are, um, that are innovative, but the current sets of things that, that are used to assess them, um, the accountability that they have doesn't value that very much. And so if that system can change and value more of that, then I think I think we could see something that would be rapid in the sense of uh, school change, which is not certainly overnight or over a year or two years, but you know, over many years we might actually see some, some quite positive changes. There are people who would like to see that. Where do you see uh let's say games for learning in five years or ten years what do you think are the key challenges and the key trends perhaps for the future of education sure uh, so I'm I'm not a believer that schools are gonna go away anytime soon <laughs> there's a lot of reasons for that I think schools will be more or less like they are now um, at least structurally for quite some time to come and uh, but I do sort of see I do sort of see some possibilities for changing what you're actually doing in the classroom, and, and uh, there's been sort of different ways of thinking about this. But right now, we sort of have um, uh, we have students sort of do work outside of class, and they listen to the teacher in class for the right. most part. And one can think about sort of a, situations where that gets turned around. I mean, I think I think the way that games ultimately get uh, delivered is not the right word, but uh, but that students actually play games in school or through school. Um, will change in a lot of different ways. So it's not necessarily going to be a kid sitting down at a computer and for 30 or 40 minutes, and that might be one way that they do it, but certainly not the only way. Um, and we, if we look at the styles the, of the way kids play games now, sometimes it's sitting down at a computer or a console, but oftentimes it's with a mobile device. Right. And because that device is with them all the time, it sort of provides opportunities for doing things that maybe start in school and move outside of school, or start outside of school and move into school. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, people say that, well, you know, games can happen outside the classroom entirely, and, and maybe that's true, and, and, and a lot of our models currently work on that presumption that the game play takes outside of class and the teacher sort of facilitates things in class. But I think there's opportunities to do it the other way around, where mm. they're learning things outside of class, and the teacher is, becomes the facilitator of things in class, where they're actually using, using games in class. So I think both of those are possibilities, but I do think that um, uh, uh, schools will exist the way they are, but maybe classrooms will look different in the mm -hmm. future. Maybe not so distant, distant future where it's not the teacher standing up at the front of the room, but the teacher sort of moving more throughout the room and di having discussions and relating things back to things that they've done in games outside of class or bringing new things into class and introducing it in, in sort of more hands-on ways. Hmm.